Hello, hello. We are going to do these practice problems, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna review these ones. So these, um, if if you need some help on these, of course, let me know, and I can make a video for those. But I'm gonna go through the assignment here to the multiple choice and uh, go over each one. Okay. So 71, it says, which one of the following is not a characteristic of the least squared regression line? Okay. So we've learned a lot about the least squared regression line, and we know that um, we learned in our activity that the least squared regression line happens to go through uh, the point x bar, y bar. It happens to go through there. So that's something we learned from our activity that we didn't already know before. Pretty cool. So we know that's true. The least square regression line minimizes the sum of the squared root residuals. That's why it's called the least squared regression line. So we know that's true. The slope of the least squared regression line will always have the same sign as the correlation. So let's say this is about correlation of, I don't know, maybe a point, point 0.79 then we know that the slope, whatever it is, is positive and vice versa, okay? So that would mean if the correlation is positive, then the slope is positive, or if the correlation is negative, then the slope is negative. So this is a true statement. They have the same sign. Last, the least squared regression line is not resistant. That we know is true. So if we had a least squared regression line, and we did in our activity, and we added this green dot here, we know that the line then would be pulled down to try to meet up with this green one. So we know that this is a true statement. So this one has to be false. The slope, see, I think this would be, if we corrected it, um, the correlation, the correlation of the least square regression line is always between negative one and negative negative one and positive one. All right, now let's take a look at 72. It says, each year students in an elementary school take a standardized math test. For a class of fourth graders, the average score was 55.1 with a standard deviation of 12.3. In the third grade class, these same students have an average score of 61.7 with a standard deviation of 14.0. The correlation between these two sets is 0.95. Please calculate the equation of the least squared regression line predicting fourth grade using third grade. Okay, so because they say that, we know which one is X and which one is Y. In this chapter, we've learned, can I use X to predict Y? So we're thinking, can I use the third grade scores to predict the fourth grade scores? So now let's denote which one goes with what. So if this is my fourth grade score, that's Y. So if this is the average Y value, I write it down like this. And then this is my standard deviation of fourth grade scores. So that would be the standard deviation of Y. Next it states um, that my third grade scores are that. So that would be this. Right? And the standard deviation is 14. So that's the standard deviation of my x values. Beautiful. Now I also know that r is 0.95. So can I come up with a formula of some sort, or can this not be calculated from the data? Well, if I go to my notes that I made the other day, it's like, oh yeah, we took some notes right here, didn't we? So I went ahead and took a snapshot of these notes and put them right here. Okay, so we're gonna be able to work through this question with this information. Y bar is 55.1. S of Y is 12.3. X bar is 61.7. And S sub Y, or the standard, excuse me, S of X, the standard deviation of X is 14.0. Last R is 0 0.95. So we have all of the ingredients. Let's think about this. Ingredient, bam. Ingredient, bam. Ingredient, 
Yes. Ingredient. Yes. Last ingredient, right? I have all my ingredients to be able to use these formulas to create a least squared regression line, also known as a line of best fit. So let's do it. V1 is R, so that's 0 0.95, times S sub Y over S sub X. Do a little number crunching. Okay, so I already know this is going in my equation, B naught plus B one X. It's gonna go right there in front of the X. So I might be able to eliminate, but I'd like to go ahead and finish this problem out, but I can kind of eliminate already See how these are now going to be the right answers and I can eliminate these. And I, I know I can solve for that. Okay, so we've narrowed it down to A and B. Now let's keep going. I have B1. And now, so let's solve for B naught. So that'd be Y bar, 55, one, minus our value for B1 goes there. So we'll stick it there. And then our X bar. Mm, yeah, so some people love these. And other people are like, what, what are these people that love these? I'm not, I don't know what they're talking about. All right. So I get 3.60. So 3.60 is B naught. So I know what B naught is. I can substitute that in. And that is what my least squared regression line looks like. Now let's compare with our choices. There we go. It's pretty darn close. So I'm going to go with it. Answer. Next, it says, using the data from the LPGA tour, a regression analysis was performed. X is the average of driving distance. So this is X. And why is your scoring average? Using the output from the regression table. Okay, so we call this a constant. So when I look at this, we said y hat is equal to a plus bx. We know that a is called the constant. So this is a. And so this is actually b, the part in front of the x. So we have b and we have x. So we have all the ingredients to make a least squared regression line. So A, we know is 87.974, and B is negative, so I'm going to change my plus sign, negative 0 0.06, and we have our X. That's our driving distance. So this matches um, part C. Now these values we'll use later on, but for now we're just focusing on the first column. All right, nice. Okay, now these set of questions all go together, the same context. Let's take a look. So it says, by looking at the equation of the least squared regression line, you can see that the correlation is what? So R is what we mean by correlation. And we know that the correlation is between negative one and one, okay? Now notice, we just discovered last time, so this is an important bit of information we collected. The slope of a least square regression line will always have the same sign. So if the slope is, here we identify that the slope is positive 0.93, then we know that our R has to be greater than zero, which is another way of saying positive. Nice work, guys. Okay, so I've got my extra piece of notebook paper and I'm gonna keep going here, 75. Um, it says, in addition to the regression line, the report on Mumbai measurements say that R squared is 0.95. Okay, 
So if I look in my notes from the IQ score, I noticed my learning target two was, this is how we interpret the coefficient of determination, which is R squared. So I'm saying that about 95%, that's where I'm getting that number, of the variability in height is accounted for by the least grade regression line. That is what D says. So I call these scripts that D matches what we are looking for. That is how I interpret the coefficient of determination, also known as R squared. Check out the next video for the rest of the questions in this section.